Mike McMurray, Phil Fisher with Fishler Property Company. Thanks for coming in today, Phil. I'm excited to be here, Mike, man. I appreciate you having me. You're the first one. I'm looking forward to We've it. We've been talking about this. It's going to be good stuff. Residential, commercial broker. I think you are the top. Appreciate the kind words, Mike. Yep. You get, McMurray clearly is the top residential group. You guys are doing fantastic work. Well, we're really. going to talk about the market downtown Fort Myers, which is pretty exciting. I've been here all my life since three years old, 54 now. And been waiting for downtown for the longest time. And it's been going on for a while now, but uh, you're in that market heavy. Yes, sir. Uh, leasing and And say sales. investment sales, for sure. Yeah, so our office the- is right downtown on First Street. We live and breathe it every day. And um, the renaissance that we're seeing is really about 15 years in the making. That's amazing. It, it really is an incredible story. It all started in 2005 when the city council passed a $55 million bond program, and they used that money to reinvest into infrastructure and beautification, streetscaping, lighting, landscaping, put all the bricks in the street, and brought all those historic buildings kind of back to life. Yeah. And what led the way out of that uh, renaissance beginning was the restaurant scene was starting to take off. Yeah. And then the art and entertainment scene took off. Then you got event nights that are the first and third and fourth Friday of every weekend. We got thousands of people that come down there on Friday nights and, you know, take in all the greatness that is downtown. We got 63 restaurants in and around downtown. That's amazing. It's incredible what's going on. It doesn't feel like 63. It's pretty amazing. One of my favorite restaurants is Downtown Pizza. D Hop. Hard to beat that, right? Love it. It's been there for a while. It has. Everybody <laughs> loves D Hop. But we've got other restaurants that are really starting to explode. Bruno's of Brooklyn on 2nd Street, right? Yeah. Written up by Forbes magazine. How cool is that? That's you know? Italian. Italian. And pretty small place, too, isn't it? 1,200 square feet. That's amazing. Very all, all homemade. Quaint very quaint and mm-hmm. warm and inviting, all that good stuff and good food. And super authentic food. That's awesome. And then, of course, the Luminary, you know, the yeah. new hotel that's right there on the river. Uh, they've got a couple restaurants. Had our f- Christmas party there in downtown. Had a great steak. It's a great spot. Yeah. Yeah. Two, two restaurants on the ground floor. And then, of course, the Beacon, the bar on the top, you know, yeah. 6,000 square feet up 12 stories overlooking the river. Great views. Come on, man. I mean, <laughs> right? It's awesome. So downtown is definitely seen uh, a little bit of a renaissance yeah. in the last 15 years. And it deserves it. It totally does. I mean, because you, so other downtown areas, we're going to talk about a lot of things today, but um, when I look at downtown Fort Myers, I also think of other nearby downtowns like Sarasota. Nice little downtown, too. For sure. 10 degrees colder up there. Mm-hmm. I don't know if people realize mm-hmm. that, but it is 10 degrees colder up there. For sure. And St. Pete's another one that we're kind of tracking along yeah. with what's happened in downtown St. Pete. Same thing's happening. 10 degrees in, colder. For sure. <laughs> That's right. Very crowded up there. That's right. A lot of traffic. But our downtown is an exciting place to be right now. And the other thing about our downtown is we, in the last handful of years, have hit the radar for the nation's best investors and developers. Yeah. And I've got some information to share a little later that I think might surprise some folks yeah. about how much investment is coming here from all over the nation. Like All over the nation? All over the nation. What about different parts of the world, even? There are uh, a number of Canadian and Israeli investors here. Seen a few a Germans. Lot of Canadians. Seen but, a lot of Canadians and and the Europeans with COVID and everything. They really haven't come back yet. That's right. So we'll see them soon too. That's right. But I think people for the first time, like a lot of my clients. I mean, they, a lot of them from Santa Bel and Captiva. I mean, we do all markets, but Santa Bel and Captiva. A lot of those guys don't know downtown Fort Myers, but once they find it and they experience it, they love it. That's one of my favorite things is yeah. we, most of our clients are from other markets yeah. and we love bringing them down here and hosting them around our town and seeing that exact reaction. Yeah. Wow. This is so cool. I love how authentic this town is. I mean, we've got an amazing collection of historic buildings, most of which were built between 1900 and 1928 yeah. and they've all been reactivated in their full life and yeah. great restaurants. And an incredible art and entertainment scene. I mean, it's just a, a fun place to the be. The Sydney Burn. I saw that the other day. They got that rooftop sun yeah. deck now. How cool is that, right? Amazing. So right and across. it's not just a little deck. I mean, it's a huge rooftop deck area for parties and gatherings and things like that, correct? Weddings. Yeah. All those things. Yeah. Sydney Burn is a really cool building. Like, exactly. Big sale you just had. $20 million on a property that's been... Like that for some time. That's right. Been in the family for a long time. I think the Sullivan family. That's right, Sullivan family. 
uh, gray property, yeah. uh, 4.7 acres of upland, a lot of great entitlements on it. The site's approved for two 25-story towers, 352 units of residential. Joe's Crab Shack is part of it, 131 slip, marina, and the Legacy Harbor Hotel. So exactly. what's going to happen with the marina? Well, the group that bought it, you know, as we were just talking about, Fort Myers is on the national radar for some of the nation's best investors and developers, and that's a great example of it. The yeah. group that bought that was out of New Jersey, and yeah. they're a very sophisticated developer, and um, they're basically in the planning phase right now. We spent a lot of time evaluating, underwriting the property, getting real clear on what we could and could not do there, Yeah, but now they're going to the next phase of kind of tightening up the design and deciding what the finished product is going to look like. So they're going to spend the next few months working on that with architects and engineers and coming up with a vision. Just goes to show you how far Fort Myers has come because that, that property has been there for a while. It has. And uh, I remember seeing in the little hotel down there as a kid because mm -hmm. there was a little hotel right there. It's one of those properties that a lot of people have a story on. Yeah. You know? Well, uh, I can tell you another story. You said Gro Joe's Crab Shack yep. used to be the chart house. Mm and that's where I got, not married, but that's where our reception was. Nice. Yeah, 25 years ago. Nice. This past December. And, wow. uh, yeah, we snuck in there before dinner time, before they opened up, and, you know, had a great time. Never forget Congratulations. it. Congratulations. I think our picture was even, even in there on the board or something like that nice. after Joe's Crab Shack uh, yeah. took it over. And my kids would go in there and go, yeah. you got married or you're... <laughs> well, you're, the views at that spot yeah. are incredible, right? <laughs> this is where you had your... Uh, your reception, Joe's Crab Shack? No, mm -hmm. it was the Chart House. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. great waterfront. Great waterfront. Uh, the marina is, you know, 131 slips, completely full, on a waiting list. Yeah. Exceptional property. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that, that's a great kind of transition into what else is happening in downtown, which is all the, all the residential growth. Yeah. Uh, which is largely, to this point, been apartments, but high-quality Class A apartments yeah. done by very sophisticated, prominent national developers. Uh, the West End at City Walk was the first one. And uh, if you recall, that's right next to the Publix, what used to be called First Street Village. Yeah. 317 apartment units. We sold that group the land. Uh, they developed a great property on it, and it just sold. Turned out beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, incredible amenities. If you've not walked through that, I you have. should find a reason to. The amenities are exceptional. Um, and it's on the Riverside, too, correct? It's, it's between First Street and... McGregor. Yeah. So it does not have river frontage, but it certainly has river views. Now, what's the other one? It, Triton it seems K. Like it's Triton. Right. Triton K is right next to it. So another apartment complex. Another apartment complex. Both, you know, high quality Class A apartments. Yeah. Uh, we sold that group the land, and they're from Columbus, Ohio, and they're still under construction. Expect to get their certificate of occupancy and open their leasing office in February. But both of those are really kind of setting the standard on high quality apartments yeah. in Lee County. And when City Walk sold in December of last year, it set the set the new bar yeah. for price per square foot in entire Lee County. That's great. So those are incredible properties that are that's, really going to kind of drive our city. That's the thing. When you think about downtown, you go to that that uh, the bridge going over to North Fort Myers and connecting to Fort Myers, and you think that's really where downtown starts, but it doesn't anymore. Naturally, it starts where City Walk pretty much is. I mean, that's a whole new area right that's there. That's exactly right. You've got single family there. You've got some mixed use, I think, there too. That's right. Um, and some exciting you know, things coming down that for, way. For sure, yeah. The, the center of gravity of downtown has definitely been pulled that direction because now we have, you know, 626 new Class A apartments right there yeah, and a few more coming. We're working yeah. on a couple others in the area. I brought some stats to share on that. Um, you know, just those two are 646 units, but we're working on a half a dozen other properties in the area. And, and back to my statement about how Fort Myers is on the national, uh, it's on the national scene. Listen to where these developers are coming from that are looking to make investments in our community. Indianapolis, Indiana, Houston, Texas, Columbus, Ohio, Wilmington, North Carolina, Secasis, New Jersey, New York City, Miami. I mean, it wasn't too long ago that most of the investment that was happening was local. Yeah. What we have now is national dollars coming here, which is creating a lot of jobs. It's increasing property values creating opportunities for future generations, diversifying our economy, and really making downtown more resilient. So how does that, we, we think about this new market that we've been in now for a couple of years, how does it compare to 
2006 and five and seven, those markets, because downtown was you had a lot of condominiums and a lot of development going on down there from outside developers, too. So mm -hmm. what's the difference? Well, there was a fair amount of speculation happening in that 2005, six, seven era. Um, not much speculation happening now. Yeah. So the lending criteria is much more strict. It's harder to get projects financed. Yeah. So therefore, um, a, if a project gets approved, uh, it has a much higher uh, success rate. Yeah. And so we don't have people that are gambling as much, I guess, is yeah. you know, another way to say and it. And then, again. Very conservative projects going on right now. And there's a lot more downtown to help it, too, like That's, you said. Like how many restaurants you said? So we have 63 restaurants That's downtown. That's amazing. That and incredible? you don't think there's that many. Yeah. But when you start looking at how many we have in and around there, tonight is Music Walk, right? Yeah. And they're going to shut all the streets off, and there'll be eight bands scattered off downtown, and there'll be 5,000 people down there walking around the streets. And that's what goes on downtown in the, the weekends. That's right. Daytime, nighttime, a lot of activities like that. Uh, you know, when we had lunch today, we're walking down First Street, and every single table on the outside of First Street from all the restaurants, all full on a waiting list. That's great. I mean, it's exploding, and people want to live down there, and they want their office down there, Yeah. and they just like that authenticity. Yeah. Uh, most of the developers in the country are trying to kind of create that uh, First Street, Main Street vibe. Well, we have it, and it's the real deal in downtown, yeah. you know, and it's on the water, and we got great parks there. I mean, it's a great quality of life. So thinking about the future, I mean, I mean we, we talked a little bit about naturally the, the new sale that you just had at 20 million congrats again thank you um deserve it and uh more to come team, um, team effort got a great team on that but as far as you know there's other areas of downtown too there's there's east part of downtown you know past the library For i mean sure. i think there's some development going on there and some planning going on there and then there's also south like towards the red sox stadium there's a lot there that can happen and what's the plans there what Great are some question. of the things that you see? Yeah, happy to talk about that. Let's go back to what you said about the library. So right next to the library at First and Fowler used to be a church site. Yeah. Church got taken down. It was obsolete, had some asbestos. The church chose to take the property down or take the building down. We arranged a sale on that to this Wilmington, North Carolina group. Okay. It's going to build really nice apartments right on that. Okay. It's going to be a great location. It will also kind of expand the center of downtown yeah. and create a whole lot more walkability. Uh, that's one of the things that Fort Myers has in spades. We have a very walkable downtown. Yeah. And the more and the wider variety of residential options that we can bring in downtown, the better. Downtown succeeds with people, you know. Yeah. We need more people to be down there. Right now we have about 10,000 people living in downtown. But mo most national retailers want to see 20, 25,000 people in a trade area. Yeah. So that's really why we have local retail down there. We don't have a lot of national brands. Yeah. But we're on our way. We're and, on our way. And when we get these new projects open and full, we're going to be able to attract some really great, high-quality national retailers to our downtown. What do you think of some of the, some of the projects that are coming? I mean, what yeah. are some of those projects besides the apartment complexes, which I want to touch back on that real quick, too. When you say apartment complex, mm -hmm. it's not just geared towards younger people. No, it's interesting that... Because um, a lot of people think, well, a lot of young people want to be downtown, and it's more of a younger demographic. That's and, certainly part of it. Yeah. Uh, that's certainly part of it. Um, young professionals are certainly interested in living in, in urban settings like that. But what's not talked about very much is a third of those apartment units, when a new project kind of comes online, the first third are almost always rented out to empty nest baby boomers okay. that are in their 60s yeah. that love that urban lifestyle yeah. and are looking to simplify their life. Yeah. And they like the idea of not having a lot of their net worth tied up in a property. They could turn the key and leave for two months and go see the grandkids or go to Spain or whatever. Yeah. And even if it's a second or third home, they like the idea of having an urban apartment. And so if we're gonna put 300 units on a site, what we found over and over again is the first hundred are rented to that demographic, those That's empty great. nest baby boomers That's who love great. that urban lifestyle. And I know that some of my clients, like I said earlier, that they love downtown. They, they didn't know it was really down there. But once mm -hmm. they go down there and experience and, and the dining and walk around, they really think it's really cool. It's a great place. Yeah. And so that has created a trickle effect on some of the other property types. And office is one that I thought was interesting for us to talk about. Like, what's going on in office, you know? Yeah. What, what's your perception, Mike, of, like, what's going on in the world in office? 
with the work from home and all that? Is it, I mean, what do you think's happening in an office? Well, you know, I, I've said in my own field, the bricks and sticks, you know, I mean, I don't need an office as much. I can work from home. You know, and I think that's where the apartments come into play. And then also, too, you got all the restaurants, everything. So when they're not working from home or what, they've got something outside their door to go to, you know. You, you just tapped on two great things. The apartment design, the individual units are changing yeah. to accommodate that. Okay. So folks can have a larger space in their unit or somewhere in the apartment community to work. Yeah. Creating co-working spaces inside of apartment communities. Yeah. That's, that's in all the new designs. Yeah. That's item number one. The second thing we're seeing, which doesn't get talked about very much is we're seeing businesses move here from other states yeah. faster than we ever have. Yeah. So entrepreneurs, small companies, people looking to, you know, go to a location where they don't have as much uh, unpredictability and their ability to kind of keep their business open or not. They're coming to Florida. That's awesome. And it's having a significant effect on our office properties. So let me share some numbers with you. The national office vacancy rate, which is percentage of um, total space available in a building compared to what's vacant, what's empty, somebody's not paying rent on it. Nationally, it's 12%. I think if you told a lot of people that, they would think that it would be higher because a lot of people think kind of the office is dead and we're, we're leaving the office and we're never going back. So nationally, 12%. Florida, 9%. Better. Fort Myers, 5% which means we're 95% occupied and we only have 5% vacant, which that is a metric in the industry of a very healthy market. When you have 95% occupancy, usually you still have developers building new buildings. Yeah. It's very healthy. Downtown Fort Myers, 3.5% vacancy rate. That's crazy. I mean, it's highly desirable. Yeah. A lot of people want to be down there for yeah. all these things we're talking about. Yeah. It's it's really exciting to see what's happening. I love there. like you like you said it started 15 years ago when this transition started transformation started happening. That's right? right. That's right. And that was in the downturn. That was. And it was exciting to see the, all that brick coming into the streets and just that charm and you know that just that historical feel that we have here in downtown Fort Myers because that is the historic district. For sure. Right. Yeah. So we've got Edison, Firestone, and all those people that used to winter down here, mm -hmm. and that was where it was pretty much at. We Downtown got a great story. Fort Myers. Great story. People love that story. Absolutely. Yeah. Back to your question about what else is happening uh, south of MLK and I, kind of on the perimeter of what we know is the walkable core downtown. Yeah. Um, that area is defined as Midtown. And the city has spent the last handful of years putting a lot of planning around that, trying to understand infrastructure, where utilities need to be extended, and really doing the the heavy lifting to position it for redevelopment and growth. And we're starting to see some exciting projects coming out of the ground. So um, over by the new fire station, there's going to be some projects in the next couple of years that will come out of the ground. Uh, over by the Red Sox Stadium, there's some activity around there. That's great. So when you think about the future of downtown, yeah, that's where it's going to be. Yeah. Because most of the large parcels in the core of downtown have been spoken for or they've already been developed. Yeah. But the future, as we look for what's going to happen in the next 10, 20 years, it's going to be in that midtown area. You could see that. If you drive over there, you That's go, right. why isn't this developed? Yes. And I know they've been talking about what do we do with the, the Red Sox old stadium and, you know, all that. What I remember at one time they were thinking about doing an aquatic center. Right. You know, which would have been fantastic for my daughter. Yep. Um, but uh, – and fantastic for Southwest Florida. But – you know, I, I also, too, you, you think about parks, things like that. Hopefully mm -hmm. they're going to be doing some of that. Uh, big know. open space is definitely part of that, yeah. that midtown plan because yeah. everybody recognizes yeah. um, when you have that much area, we got to make sure we've preserved enough green space so we have balance. And parking, it seems like we're kind of – you know, we're thinking about that along the way. That's right. That's right. They definitely We've got have got a few parking garages and yep. things like that. So I'm sure they're going to, wherever we need them more, yeah. you know, that we'll have that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So what else is happening downtown? Um, you know, hotels, Luminary made a huge impact. Yeah. Uh, not only visually, because it's changed our skyline. We've got a great place to go and restaurants and that rooftop bar is fantastic. Yeah. But it's bringing groups of people and introducing Fort Myers to the nation, really. Bringing yeah. in two, three, four, five hundred person groups who are staying in our downtown for a handful of days and experiencing all that we have. And the convention center there, how much, what can that hold? And what kind of, what, 
what types of groups can actually what that that convention center can actually serve because it's a pretty good size. It is. I think it's thirty three thousand square so feet. So it's a good size. Yeah, a couple thousand people in there yeah. pretty easily. And like you said, you've got the luminary, but then we've got another hotel that we've got a friend that's going to do one down there too. I believe two exciting hotels. Yeah, yeah the the uh, Hampton Inn, which is under construction right now, that it's the corner of McGregor. They're on the second floor already. But I think the one you're referring to is our friend David Fry, yeah. who has the property Great at man. First and Jackson, right across from the Sydney Burn Davis, right yep. there where the fountain is. Yeah. So that's going to be that's a, in the heart. Oh my gosh! Yeah. I mean, right in the heart. And that's is that going to be a Marriott uh, boutique type? I think. Yeah. yeah. Very urban. Yeah. Uh, clean design. Yeah. Uh, beautiful property. I am really excited, excited about, about that, that one. Yeah. A ground floor restaurant, maybe something interesting on the top. On the top. Yeah. Nine stories. Uh, it's going to fit right in. It's going to be perfect, and it's going to bring a whole lot of life and energy to First Street because it's just a key location, you know, right there in the heart of downtown. What I'm excited the, about that one. What about the arts? You know, a lot of times downtowns like that and and cities like that, um, they need the arts. So what what do you what do you see? You know, more galleries, more artists coming in. I mean, we've got some friends that are. Painting buildings down there if they can uh, do it. All that L- good stuff. Loving the murals, right? The, <laughs> murals, the murals that are popping up are awesome. Yeah. <laughs> if you haven't seen the one inside of the City Walk parking garage, you got to go check that out. Really cool. But back to what you're saying. Did our friend Reben Schneider do that one? He did not. Oh, uh, he's a great artist. He is an <laughs> exceptional artist. Um, the art scene downtown is really kind of anchored by what's going on at the Florida Rep. You okay. know, live professional theater. Um, really top quality, brings a ton of people downtown, uh, really kind of the anchor of things. A lot of people don't realize we have that down there. And it's so good. Yeah. It's exceptional. They have yeah. a great program. Um, last year they pivoted with the, with the COVID thing, and they did it outdoors, the whole season outdoors, which okay. was great. Um, but that kind of anchors the art scene. The Sydney Byrne Davis yeah. constantly – having new installations and then from there you've got a number of small galleries that have paintings and other kind of art um i can see that getting only you know better only gonna get better only gonna get better and the music scene's strong down there yeah um it just all comes together for a great kind of cultural experience for folks that you know come downtown for that businesses down there it's always been known where that's where the the law firms are some of the accounting firms and and little shops. Uh-huh. Anything else different down there whatsoever? You know, what we're seeing is there's a handful of real estate companies down there. Oh. Uh, architects, engineers. Uh, we're seeing tech companies show up. Okay. We're seeing um, other professional services like photography studios. You know, getting back to the Luminary Hotel, you also, I don't know if we mentioned the Oxbow. That's a pretty cool little restaurant right there on the water. I mean, the views yeah. at that place. And then... Not too, I mean, just recently they cleared the little island out there. Yeah, Who's Lof- behind that and what do you think's going to happen there? Yeah, Lofton Island. Uh, that's a really exciting um, addition to downtown. I think what they're going to do there, we, we visited with the group that owns that this week. Um, although they've not finalized their plans, it's going to be obviously water based. Yeah. Uh, they're going to expand the marina. They're going to have a water taxi that'll take people back and forth that don't have a boat. But they'll have a lot of dock facilities for locals that want to go there by boat. Yeah. Um, definitely going to have a restaurant, a couple of pools, adult pool, kids pool, okay, bar, yeah, and then some kind of club where okay. folks can have a cabana or, or something that would have a little bit of privacy. But it's definitely going to be kind of beach club in That's nature. Neat. So you'll have this island out in the middle of the river with a big white sand area. And you'll be looking back on downtown. That's I mean, great. It's going to be really cool. We've got a great skyline. When you get over to North Fort Myers and Cape Coral, our skyline's amazing. Incredible. And Up only and getting down better. the river. Only getting better. Yeah. Too. Yeah. When, when these deals that we're talking about now are coming out of the ground in the next couple of years, which yeah. there's a few other mid-rises, um, it's only going to get better. It's so, really exciting. So um, also connected to the uh, – um, Luminary, you've got Centennial Park down there. What's going on there? Because I, I know the Luminary's got the little amphitheater. Yeah, two two great things happening with Centennial Park. That amphitheater you're talking about, Bandshell, that's under construction right now. Yeah. And um, that is going to bring a new dynamic that we've not had in the past where you could have uh, large outdoor, you know, entertainment. Yeah. Whether it be musical, live shows, what have you. Um, going to be a great amenity for everybody that's staying, all these groups that are coming in for events yeah. at the Harbor Side next door. 
Um, and then there's also improvements that are happening on the other side of the bridge there in Centennial Park, kind of okay. a refresh of all the facilities, uh, playgrounds, restrooms, all those you things. You think we'll see more concerts in the park? And I think we will because yeah. we'll have better facilities for it. Yeah. And uh, what a great spot, you know. Yeah. I'm like right on the water looking at the live music. There's yeah. the river. Come on, man. It's yeah, awesome. It's great. Yeah. It's great. Some people, when they think of downtown, they think of safety. I mean, it's pretty safe downtown. I mean, we got Fort Myers Finest down there. Very Police safe. It. Very safe. Yeah. Um, the city also has a great um, security infrastructure where they installed um, closed circuit TV cameras. Yeah, I see all the cameras down on, there. On all those yeah. uh, street lights. So they have great infrastructure in place to yeah. keep folks safe. And I'll tell you, as a business owner downtown, I spend every day down there and a lot of times on the weekends. Um, we feel very safe in downtown. Yeah. Uh, the city's done a great job of creating safety down there and, uh, you know, strong police presence, but they don't, they're, they're not in your face, yeah. right? They do their job, Yeah. but they're. I know kinda, whenever I've gone downtown at night, I've always feel, felt very safe. Right. I've always seen the police down there just patrolling and very That's right. friendly. And, That's right. You know, so I think it is a safe place. Yes, for sure. You know, it's, it's just finding a place to park, but we've got those parking garages. So, you know, a lot of people don't realize we have those. They, they're looking for spots on the street. But uh, we do have those parking garages. And, again, like you said, I think it's safe. Yeah. It's very safe. It's safe as anywhere. For sure. You know? Yeah. So I, I think if you compare our town, our, our urban center to others kind of up the West Coast, yeah, ours is safer than – really most yeah how do we differ what do you think different is different from us than like sarasota like our little downtown their downtown naples downtown i mean i know they're different markets you know different uh not different people but uh naples we all know naples is very very wealthy very fluent um mm -hmm. area um but we've got that here too it's just i think a lot of people what people like about fort myers um and our downtown is – I always tell people that people like Fort Myers because they can they can just be like everybody else. You know, whereas in Naples, it's a little bit – you know, it's a little bit showy. And it's a little – it's it, nothing wrong with Naples. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Um, different lifestyle. Great restaurants, all that. But we've got great restaurants too. Yeah, absolutely. And I think a lot of people just like to put their little bald cap on and just be like everybody else when they can because they're coming from New York or wherever and – you know the hustle and bustle of their life or their business or whatever yeah. and they come yeah. down here to to fort myers and they feel just like everybody yeah. else yeah. and it's friendly yes you know very friendly uh it's just comfortable we bring people in from other markets and we walk them through uh, patio de leon that great little area where those restaurants all come together yeah and they're kind of in the buildings and there's you know folks running around with their dogs and it's buzzing and there's somebody playing live music and folks over here having a drink and there's the art gallery uh it just creates a very comfortable vibe for yeah. people yeah and uh i think that's what's appealing we're dog know? friendly big time dog friendly what about scooters not seeing many scooters <laughs> No, I got a scooter. I know you do. I've seen it. <laughs> I've seen it. Fifty-four yeah. year old man on a scooter. I don't think I'm going downtown. Anymore. Bring it on, man. We'll check it out. You'll be the inaugural scooter guy. Yeah. You know those statues that uh, that were down there. I love those statues. They're going away now, right? Yeah, I think yeah. they are. But those have been a great part of our downtown for. And that for was a an artist of years. from like South, South America? America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, great work. Great yeah. work. Certainly. Uh, well photographed, right? Yeah. People love taking photos next to those, yeah. those art pieces. Yeah. And there's a reason for that, for that to come in and, and stay there that long. And an artist like that say, yeah, because that's what it was. Bro. That's right. That's right. Yeah. It was part of a development project, and um, the developer was looking to, you know, find a way to kind of add some value and say thank you to the city. Yeah. And that was the way they chose to do it. That's awesome. Very well received. That's you great. Know, all the residents love it. All the locals love it. They're great. So what's your favorite restaurant? Bruno's. Bruno's. Yeah. Yeah. When I'm going on what's a date, your favorite meal date night with my with my bride, I'm going to Bruno's. So you went there last night because I called you and you didn't answer your phone. Come on, Mike. <laughs> but I eat a lot downtown, right? Because um, we're there. So yeah. we walk to lunch every day. Yeah. And that's one of the things that we love and, frankly, our clients love. I mean, they love to come to our office for meetings, right? Yeah. Especially at 11 o'clock because yeah. we'll do our meeting and then everybody walks out. Yeah. But there is a great group of restaurants kearns has a incredible selection of a handful of restaurants right there on first street uh, but got everything from you know mom and pops to more regionals yeah um and everything you want which is what we appreciate if you need if you need to eat in 15 minutes and got you're that. in a hurry we got that if 
you got a little time and you want fresh fish and oysters that got flown in from somewhere, we yeah. got that. Yeah. You know, and little the, coffee shops, great coffee shops, you know, and it took a while for all of that to fill in, yeah. but we have great variety right now and locals appreciate it. That's awesome. Yeah. It's not just one or two things that you, you know, kind of get in the rut. Great variety down there. So little old Fort Myers growing up. Yeah. And the best is yet to come. Yeah. I mean, with all this out of market investment that's coming here, it's really just going to continue to add on itself. And the more, you know, high quality talent we're bringing to office buildings down there, and the more folks that are going to live down there and increase our 24 7 population, that's only going to add to the vibrancy and yeah. the resilience of our downtown. Well, we got RSW close by, we got our little private jet port. There's a lot of services that feed Fort Myers and Southwest Florida that that uh, have to offer to our people that are coming down here to live full time. That's or right. Second homes or, or start a business and, and or bring their business down, their company down, whatever it might be. That's exactly right. And naturally not to forget our beaches. Yep. So, and beaches from Fort, downtown Fort Myers, I mean, heck, we're 40 minutes away. 40 minutes, right. And pretty easy travel. Yeah. So not a lot of traffic. That's, That's right. what I like about it too. So everything west of 41 there's really not that much and not much has changed i mean just redevelopment yeah. and homes being either torn down or remodeling i mean mm -hmm. it's still it's all developed yeah so all the development is east 75 what's developed is pretty much developed i mean like That's you right. said downtown will change and, yeah. and things being torn down and things new things being built and things like that and the redevelopment like we're, we're talking about but you know i mean I don't think uh, as far as traffic wise and congestion and all that's that, right we don't we don't really have any yeah you know and you think about the neighborhoods that are nearby downtown that kind of serve it which is most of what's around mcgregor boulevard yeah right that's all that's all infill it's already built out uh we're not going to see a lot of density change there um and it's got great mature landscaping and beautiful trees and that that's really going to remain for really forever so going back to you had that 20 million dollar sale yep. that was an old building mm -hmm. the marina a lot of mm -hmm. that had been sitting there we've got some other buildings like that going to the south pretty much towards uh the the newer apartments the city walk that's right you got some older buildings in there still what do you see do you see those things changing over time as far as i know they're 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 condominiums but you know, I mean, those things get torn down too sometimes. You know, those those you've got older some little plazas right there. You've got a little, a lot of little homes in there. There will be some of that selective. Yeah. Um, I don't think we're going to see wholesale turnover yeah. on those areas, but yeah. there will be. You know, maybe this small area will get redeveloped, and maybe these uh, three or four properties will be put together into an assemblage and redeveloped. Um, as far as what's going to happen with those older. You know, waterfront condos. Yeah. You know, they're individually owned. Yeah. And they're hard to kind of get everybody on the same page. And they're good values in there, too. Great values. So, the three towers. What's the three towers down there? High point place. High point. High point place. I think those are some of the best values. They've always been some of the best values. You know, this is your expertise, not yeah. mine. But I, that's where I think there is going to be considerable opportunity in the future on the residential side is folks going in and buying those uh, well-located units that maybe have a little age on it but yeah. they're they're ready for a renovation and the location's incredible and some of the single family down there too investment wise i mean like everywhere it's gone up in price but uh what's the little uh donut place on the corner bennett's bennett's yeah so that little street right there that's a commercially zoned street isn't it yeah. mixed use it is that, i've that's always one of loved the that little street that said yeah. this could be a really cool little area it could right be there. It does seem to be positioned for somebody to come in with a vision yeah. and do something there because yeah. that one is a, is a great little spot. There's a spot like that in Austin because my daughter goes to Austin. She's a new freshman at UT, swimmer. And, yes. And uh, But we went to a, a little area that's being redeveloped, and it's got all those little homes like yeah. that down yeah. there. And you've got some bars. You've got some great little restaurants. And it's, right. it's a, not that big of a street. Yeah. But it's hopping. You know, the other thing about that little enclave – is it's a three minute walk to the heart of downtown. Yeah. So if you live in a townhome or a condo or an apartment building right there, yeah. you can walk and be right in the heart of downtown in just a couple minutes. Those are commercial. Aren't they commercially zoned in there? Most of that is uh, zoned what's called urban center. I which... just want to make sure that if people are interested in those after they see this, that they call me and not you. <laughs> 
we'll work together. How about we that? We will. Yes. That's what uh, yes, good so that, realtors do. That urban center zoning allows both commercial and and residential. Yeah. So the city's actually encouraging mixed use on those. But yeah. hey, man, whatever it takes, we'll yeah. work together, man. Yeah. Let's That's get it done. Great. That's great. Tell us a little bit about Phil Fischler. Yeah, man. Appreciate that. Grew up in Pensacola, Florida. Uh, third generation Floridian and entrepreneur. Um, went to Scambia High School and played with your buddy Emmett Smith. Yeah. And uh, that was a great experience. We had That's an awesome. awesome team, had a whole lot of fun with those guys, and then uh, went to Tallahassee and studied civil engineering at Florida State, became yeah. a Seminole. And, uh, See, I'm younger than you, so I don't remember the Emmett Smith. That was a little bit older than me, so I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember watching that and going, oh, my God, because he was the, you know, player in Florida. And just it, Escambia incredible. High School, you're yeah. like, where's that at? Where's Escambia? You right? know, yeah. but. Uh, so two years uh, back-to-back state champs with him and a whole lot of other great players. And I was just lucky to be a part of it. Yeah. Um, you said that uh, to bring him down, it took two of you. At least two. Yeah. Like, in all the years I played with him, I never saw one person take him to the ground. I would have taken it was, him. Yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> it took two or three really good tacklers to bring yeah. that guy to the ground. He was an incredible athlete. But the thing that I love about him is he always stayed humble, even yeah. to this day. Uh, he is a super humble guy, great family, um, and just fun to be around. And he's in a real estate business. Is he really? Yeah, a commercial real estate guy. Up there. In Dallas. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. He well, that figures because he played for the Cowboys. That's right. Yeah. So when he got out of playing for the Cowboys, he partnered up with Roger Staubach's company. Oh. And they started doing development together. And that's he's, amazing. Yeah. So he's got a great team, uh, and they're doing all kind of exciting things well, that's in the nice Dallas area. a referral source. You know him, so I bet you could get some referrals from him. Let's do it. No, you. Oh. <laughs> well. I'll take him, too. Well, you know, all of his work is in DFW. Yeah. So yeah. he didn't do any. We, we have had some conversations about uh, – He's very active in the retail space. Okay. And so they have some of these national tenants that will roll out growth programs. Yeah. And and many times, you know, Florida is a target for those growth programs. Yeah. So we've had some conversations about, hey, what do you think about the South Jacksonville market or some of those things? Um, so, yeah, good guy. Um, went to school in Tallahassee, graduated. and Seminole. Seminole. And then was hired to go to Dallas-Fort Worth where I started as a civil engineer for a national company. Okay. So looking back on my career, you know, first 13 years, I was a design guy, entitlement permitting engineering guy. And then I went to work for a developer where I got to be the owner of a property. We'd go find the land, build it ourselves and own it. Yeah. And then for the last 12 years, I've been a, you know, arrange the investment brokerage kind of guy. So and what, that's what I'm going to do for the rest of my career. What Love brought it. you to Fort Myers? How'd you find Fort Myers? So wife grew up in Destin, me from Pensacola. We were being recruited to come here to join a company, came over for a weekend and just fell in love with this place. Yeah. Uh, we could immediately feel a difference in just your average person from Fort Myers. They're yeah. friendly. Yeah. Uh, the Gulf Coast felt like home to us. Yeah. Uh, we drove out there and looked at Sanibel, and we kind of drove up and down McGregor, and we were like, hey, this, let's Not do this. Bad. Let's do this. Yeah. And it's turned out to be great. I mean, we have incredible friends here, um, raised our children here. Our you know, kids our went kids to school went together? From kindergarten to high school, Isn't that right? amazing? It's so cool. It seemed like yesterday when I, I first met you. I know. But I said, when I saw this guy, I said, that's a good guy right there. <laughs> <laughs> and I met your family. Your wife's an amazing lady. She's just a likewise, sweetheart. Likewise, And then your kids, fantastic. I know. So, it's, it's so I, tell, I tell our children how unique it is that they've had friends yeah. from kindergarten all the way through middle school, elementary school, and they got to graduate together. Yeah. I mean, what a gift that is. And that's the thing, you know? too. A lot of times people come down here and they go, what about schools? I mean, both of our kids went to public school, mm -hmm. and they've all turned out pretty good. And had a great experience. Yeah. I mean, no great school's education. perfect. Great education. Yeah. And are all in great, I mean, University of Texas for Olivia. Yeah. I mean, hook them, right? Okay. That's awesome. <laughs> and a lot of their friends going to great schools, yeah. but entirely public experience. It's been exciting to see for me because I've been here since I was three years old. Grew up and down, grew up, up and down McGregor. Um, my stepfather was a builder and, uh, you know, originally from Illinois, came down. And, um, you know, it, it, you got those people, are you from here? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm pretty much from here, but yeah. I'm still not from here. Mm. You know, even though I've been down here since I was three, yeah. I'm pretty much a native, but I'm not. There are the, There is that local group, that that local Fort Myers, and that's still here. Yes. You know, so even though Fort Myers has gotten bigger, you still have that small town 
um, group here. For and, sure. Uh, and it's a fantastic group of people that have helped build this town. Um, and, uh, you know, here we are today. And they love this town. Yeah. The other thing that's happening in Fort Myers that I think is really propelling our growth and creating opportunities for the future, when Olivia comes home from college, if she wants to work here, there will be jobs for her. And 10 or 15 years ago, we didn't have the number of really high quality job creators in this market that we do now. Yeah. And that is only accelerating as other parts of the country are discovering kind of the weather and the water and the way of life that we have here. Yeah. And they're moving their entire headquarters here. And that creates great jobs for the next generation. You're starting to see that down Alico. You see for Amazon sure. out there. Exactly. Scotland Trucking. That's right. From They're out of Canada. Right. Um, amazing to see right on 75. Gartner. Yeah, you know, Gartner. that's another one. Yeah. And Hurts you naturally all that. Step back and look at the numbers. Uh, for the last six years in a row, our community has grown at three times the national average for job and population growth. Three times. I mean, that's exciting that that's we're amazing. creating that many jobs yeah. and we're bringing families, professionals, creating opportunities for the next generation. I always used to say, my, you know, I, I mean, I, I, I couldn't imagine living anywhere else. When I went off to college and I came back, you know, I had a choice, me and my wife, to move out to Colorado because she had family out there and, and her mom was uh, in the real estate business out in Aspen. And I'm like, oh, Aspen is not too bad. We could go out there. But I'm like, well, I can't leave Fort Myers. This is where I'm from. It's a great place, and though. That's what's you know you know close to downtown. You've got the historical uh, McGregor Boulevard um, that leads to downtown, and and naturally living here and growing up here, you were raised off McGregor, and the streets were the backyards. The mm -hmm. streets were the yards. So all the kids played in the streets, and you know you everybody lived on a street, and mm -hmm. there's plenty of streets, and uh, you would just travel by bike, and you still do. Um, but, uh, you know, that's what's, that's real special about that because you moved away and your mom and dad still lived there. And you said, you know, I want to move back in that mm -hmm. same area. Mm -hmm. I want to move off McGregor. And I think that's, what's so special about that. And you, you see that with the next generation and the next generation, and it's only getting better residential. We're starting to see those teardowns now on some of those older homes. That's right. Um, and, but, but there's a lot of people that still like those old Spanish style homes and they'll always be around for sure. You know, people love those old Spanish homes mm -hmm. and you know, that, uh, uh, mid century modern kind of feel. Yeah. You know, I mean, you go up to Tampa and you see that old Hyde park area, Yep, just like that area there. Yeah, I mean, it's not really any different. It's a special part of part of the state for yeah. sure. Yeah. And that's only going to help downtown that much more. Only going to help downtown. Yeah. Right. So. Always be desirable. Um, you can't not drive down, McGregor and some of those side streets, Shadow Lane, yeah, many of those, and not fall in love with it. Yeah, I mean they're just dreamy. Gasparilla, Calusa, all this. It's I mean, you know, that's, yeah. where, that's where you work. Well, and a lot of people see what's you know off the streets, and and you see some of these homes, and whether they're being torn down and new ones going up, or remodeling some of the old ones, big or small. But then on the waterfront. I mean, you got some major homes going along that waterfront, major, major. whether they're built already or yep. they're being built. I That's mean, right. And cost of construction is not cheap. That's right. So, I mean, they're spending the money. Yep. You know. Hey, let me let me drop a few things about. Let's well, drop a few uh, things. Couple, drop a couple. Drop office the hammer. Things. Couple drop office the hammer. Things. Hey, you were asking me about what else is happening in the office market downtown. Uh, co-working. Have you heard of this co-working space? No. Like Venture X down in Naples. We work. We you heard work. of that. Yeah. Right? Okay. Um, starting to show up in our town is it really yeah there's one on first street uh we're gonna see we work not we work it's that concept okay. right because uh, we work is still around it is yeah so i'm i'm a i'm a solo opener or i'm an entrepreneur i have two or three people on my team and i don't want traditional office and i want to be able to come and go and i need access to lots of technology i need a conference room once or twice a month studio i need a studio um there's office buildings that are popping up to kind of serve that need, which that's, is really cool. That's fantastic. And then 20, exciting. Really? Yeah. 2300 McGregor used to be a pink building was a house. Yeah. That's being converted into office suites. 1926 home completely renovated top to bottom. Yeah. Got a cool kind of two conference rooms, a great little lobby and lots of opportunities to serve those exact customers. One, two, three person companies that want a cool space that want to be right next to downtown and want to have a parking stall and want to be able to come and go. Maybe they live across the street in Seminole Park or Edison Park. Yeah. 
So that's kind of a new addition to our little office inventory. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. You've seen a lot of that or it just started? Just starting to happen. Okay. Right. Just starting to yeah. happen. But really high quality. But it's not like technology is going to go away. That's exactly right. I mean, that's why we're doing this. That's right. <laughs> and, and COVID has really kind of accelerated the transition of folks that maybe were with a larger company. And COVID caused them to, you know, rethink things or identify new opportunity. Yeah. And they're going out and starting their own. And they're a small group, so they only need a small office space. Yeah. So, you know, 3,000 square feet on College Parkway doesn't work for them. But our, our real estate market's adjusting to that demand and starting to provide those office spaces. And yeah. Pretty cool. That's great. That's great. And you that's need to come downtown, downtown more, man. Let me buy you lunch. I know you're a busy guy and you're heading out to the islands and all that stuff, but, man. Well, I love downtown, more. though. I love downtown. Yeah. You know? I mean, my wife, we don't live off McGregor, but she's dying to get back off McGregor. I think once the kids are out of the house, we're back on McGregor. Yeah. Little town, little little home. Love that area. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So I'm I'm excited for the future of Fort Myers. It's only going to get better. The best is yet to come. Yeah, we've been doing this for a while now. My, my phone keeps on beeping and buzzing, so. All right. I think that's a wrap. <laughs> but, man, Phil... Dude, Phil Fischler, Thanks the man, me. commercial, not just downtown, all over Southwest Florida. Tampa to Naples. But you specialize in downtown. You're the man in downtown, and you're the, you're one of the top brokers in Southwest Florida. So it's an honor to have you here. You're a great friend, and appreciate you, and we'll do this again. Looking forward to it. Thanks for having me, Mike. Okay, man. You guys are doing great stuff. Okay, See ya. Thanks.